What does the Bible actually say about Christian dating? That's the question we're going to answer in this video. Hey everyone, I'm Mark and this is ApplyGodsWord.com. So in this video, I want to kind of take a bigger perspective on Christian dating. As you go through my channel and you look at all the videos that we've already done, I've talked a lot about little individual questions which people find really helpful because we dial into the specifics of a, a of a question that someone might have. And in this video, I wanna give you a broader perspective because I realize we haven't actually done that on this channel. So what does the Bible actually say regarding Christian dating? Well, it may surprise you that the Bible doesn't actually say anything <laughs> about Christian dating in a direct way. So you're not gonna find the words dating or courting or those types of words that we use in the Western world when talking about this idea of Christian dating. So the first point is really that the Bible doesn't give a legalistic blueprint on one way that people can meet the person God has for them for marriage. Now what the Bible does talk about in very specific ways and very often is Christian marriage. Marriage is a concept that you'll see throughout the Bible in Old and New Testament. What's also interesting, however, when you're talking about Christian dating, what does the Bible actually say? The Bible doesn't condemn the form of Christian dating that Westerners use at this point in history either. Throughout history, Christians have used different methods and approaches to meeting their future spouse. And I believe that that's fine and that's good. And if God wanted everyone to meet their spouse in the exact same legalistic way where they have to follow these specific steps, God would have made that very clear. But he hasn't done that. He hasn't given us one blueprint and he hasn't condemned any certain blueprint. But he has given us big principles in the Bible. So whenever the Bible doesn't talk directly about something, that's not the sign for the Christian to just go do whatever they want. The Bible has given us all the information that we need. It doesn't talk about every single topic that exists, but it gives us all the biblical truths and spiritual um, components that we need to live our life in a glorifying way in every context of life, even when those specific things aren't mentioned in the Bible. So big picture, I'm going to give you four principles in this video that aren't um, directly related to Christian dating in the Bible, but they're four principles that are in the Bible and that should direct the way that you go about dating. The first biblical principle is that marriage is good. God designed marriage, and when you read passages of scripture, like 1 Corinthians 7, for example, the Bible affirms over and over again that marriage is a good thing for those who want it. Marriage is not a biblical command. It is, however, a biblical option for those who have the desire to honor God in marriage. So the first principle is that marriage is good, and really, maybe the point 1B is Marriage is good, therefore you should date towards marriage. I believe in using the modern form of dating that we have for a specific purpose, which is a biblical purpose of Christian marriage. So there's a lot of different motivations that people often have when it comes to dating. Some Christians feel it's fine just to date um, and have a boyfriend or girlfriend just for the sake of having a boyfriend or girlfriend. So if you're not prepared to get married, some people say, hey, it's totally fine to just date and have a romantic relationship with no intention of dating. I don't hold to that belief and I'm not saying, hey, you're sinning if you're doing that, but I believe the most biblical use of Christian dating would be to pursue something that is actually in the Bible, which is Christian marriage. So therefore, I hold to the belief that people should only date when they're in a season of life where they're prepared to actually get married if God brought the right person into their life. Now, just to clarify that, that, I want to also clarify what I'm not saying because in the Christian courting model, which is a whole other topic that I've talked about before on this channel, in the Christian courting model, 
there's a belief that you should only date someone, they use the word court, they should only court someone when you feel like you wanna marry that specific person. So in the courting model, you would have been friends for a while, you would have gotten to know this person, and then you feel like, wow, I wanna marry that guy, or I wanna marry that girl, and then you would go into a tent intense season of Christian courting. And I don't believe you have to be there. I'm not saying, hey, you have to know you wanna marry the person that you're gonna date, and you just kinda have to date for that last step. I'm just saying that I believe the most wise and biblical approach to dating is that you have to be in a season in general where you would marry the person you're dating if God told you that's the person you should marry. So if you're in college and you're like, I don't want to get married in college, or you're in high school and you're like, I know I'm not ready, or you just got out of a bad relationship, or there's something else in your life where you're like, even if I started dating someone great, I know I would not marry them right now. I believe it's the most biblically wise thing to not date at all because the only long-term romantic relationship that we see in scripture is actually marriage. If you're not sure if you are prepared for Christian marriage, I actually just opened a really great new resource called AGW University. One of the courses I'm currently offering is called Marriage Material. And in that course, I unpack what the Bible actually says you need to be prepared for marriage. And this course is really good because it will help you prepare if you do want to be married, but it will also help you know what signs to look for in someone else if you're in that active dating process and you're wondering, will this person actually be a good Christian spouse one day. So I'm offering three courses right now on AGW University. Marriage Material is one of those courses. So if that's interesting to you, I'll leave a link in the description of this video and you can look more into that. The second biblical principle that I believe should guide your Christian dating approach is that intimacy and commitment are always paired together in the Bible. I talked a lot about this principle on this channel before, so I won't talk on it too long here. But again, in principle, within the Bible, there's always a direct link between intimacy and commitment. So when a man and a woman start connecting emotionally, intimately and even physically intimately, their commitment level should also be increasing with the intimacy level that's happening. So for example, the clearest way to see this principle in the Bible is where scripture says you should only have sex with your spouse. So the, that's like one of the most intimate physical acts of intimacy that you can do. Therefore, it should only be paired with the highest form of commitment two people can make towards each other, which is marriage. So you see that as, as the commitment level increases and you say, yes, we're going to be married, we're husband and wife, therefore you have access to this extreme intimacy level. People get into trouble and they damage themselves and they sin when they experience intimacy without commitment. And you can experience legalism and a bad relationship when you have commitment with no intimacy. Those things are supposed to be paired together as you grow with a man and woman. So that's why Christian dating is so tricky because the, the point of dating is to see whether or not you want to commit to someone fully in marriage. But to do that, you need to open yourself up up in an appropriate way to experience some intimacy with that person, not sexual intimacy or anything that would cross the line, but you have to open yourself up to some degree to see whether or not you two actually want to be married and you get to know each other in a greater way. So you have to always be on guard and you have to have boundaries in Christian dating because you're not married, but you need to be open to, to get to know this person. So you're always having to walk this line between intimacy and commitment. In reality, that's why I believe, again, you should date towards marriage and you should make a move one way or the other as quickly as possible. When you know this person isn't the one for you, you should break up. When you know this person is the one God has for you, the two of you should get married. That way your intimacy and connection level are always in a good place. The third biblical principle that I believe should shape your Christian dating process is that the Bible is very clear, Christians should not marry non-Christians. So for example, the most famous verse on this whole topic is 2 Corinthians 6 verse 14, where it says you should not be unequally yoked 
with an unbeliever. Another passage that is extremely clear is 1 Corinthians 7 verse 39 and there it says that you um, are free to marry anyone as long as this person belongs to the Lord, meaning that they're a believer. Now, I want to make really clear that the Bible does not say you are forbidden in a, in a clear way that you're forbidden to date a non-believer. That's not in the Bible because like we said, you, you're not, it doesn't say anything about dating. However, I think an honest interpretation of scripture and an honest and, and healthy application of scripture would lead one to, to not date a non-believer because again, it's, you're not supposed to marry a non-believer. That's extremely clear. It's un, undeniable in scripture. So it just seems extremely unwise, uh, maybe sinful in my opinion, but I think we all can agree that it would be unwise because the Bible says don't marry that person. And I think if you're just being honest about uh, 1 Corinthians 6.14 about being unequally yoked, while Christian dating is not as big as a yoke or bond as Christian marriage, it still is a bond. You still are connected to this person in a greater way and I think you are unequally yoked at that point. It also says in James 4 verse 4, don't be friends with the world. You know, and, and a friend of the world is an enemy towards God. And that doesn't mean that you can't be friendly or loving or you're not supposed to be a witness to those people who don't know Christ. But it means that you're not supposed to be connected with unbelievers in a way that you're intimate and that you're depending on them. You can minister to them, but you're not supposed to be receiving from them. And finally, the fourth principle that I think a lot of people uh, really don't think about when it comes to Christian dating is that in the scriptures, there's an emphasis on God's sovereignty and man's responsibility. So, you know, this is not the video to get into the big debate of Calvinism and Arminianism and all that kind of thing where people will continue to debate until we all get to heaven one day because, it, you know, it's just a complicated subject. Um, it's one we should study, but it's not one we're all going to solve right here in the comment section below. Long story short, I do think that scripture does emphasize God's sovereign plan and man's responsibility. And so I think you have to emphasize both of those things in the dating process. You should submit to God's sovereign plan for your life while also taking personal responsibility for accomplishing the will that God has for you. God's the one who's going to produce the results. God's the one who's ordained your days, but God's the one who's going to empower us to actually take steps of faith to accomplish the will that he actually has for us. And so I say all that because within Christian dating, there's basically two big camps of theories. You know, it's kind of like the wait on the Lord pe people who just say, don't do anything but wait on God. And then there's other people who say, well, God helps those who help themselves. So you better get out there and do something or you're going to be single forever. And what I would like to say is that I think the healthiest way is to find a, a the balance between trusting God and that will empower you to actually take steps of faith. You don't want to be anxious. You don't want to be taking uh, action steps in fear or doubt or a lack of faith in God. But when you believe that God is a sovereign plan for your life and for your relationships, that won't cause you to sit around and just wait for God to do everything. In, in the Bible, when you trust God's sovereignty, that actually empowers you to live a life of action and faith. So therefore, I encourage you, if you want to get married, you have to do both. You have to trust God's sovereign plan for your life while also taking action steps. That's really what my uh, most recent book is about, The One. And in the AGW University, which is the newest thing I, I'm launching, have just recently launched, I actually give this book away for free along with all of my other books. So I have seven total books written right now. And if you purchase the all access plan to AGW University, I throw in all of my books totally for free. You don't have to pay anything extra for them, but long story short, there's a course in there that's called 10 Steps to Meet the One. And in that course, I lay out the differences between taking action steps and trusting God's sovereignty. It's all about what you can actually do to receive the plan that God has for you. So again, if AGW University is something you're interested in or you kind of want to dive more into these topics that I talked about in this video, check out the links in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something helpful in this video. I'm Mark from ApplyGodsWord.com. Thanks for watching and God bless.